This is Deb's ball. <laughs> Like it's that. a nice, pass it around, touch it, feel it, don't <laughs> drop it. Oops, you can melt it back together. <laughs> no, it's a cool mold, and that's a dead head. Uh, is that uh, with the glass being busy like that, that you lose the texture of the mold then? Right. You know, so, right. I mean, you can still see when the light hits, you know, and it looks cool. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's all one glass, not mixed glass. That's one one piece. It was a, it's two pieces, a piece of clear, and then right. But I mean, it's not the blue and a white and clear. Is, that's the glass. No, that was already in the glass. That was one piece of because it was really kind of a test one for me. The first slump in the new kiln, before I had some real expensive glass that I wanted to play with. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure in those creases it wasn't going to stick in right. the mold or anything. You so use I use this one, and I like it. But I told Frank my first uh, my first thought was the pattern in the glass is too busy. I bought the mold because I just loved that psych right. the swirl in it, mm -hmm. and you lose that completely yep. with the pattern in the glass. <clears throat> so it was a good learning <clears throat> right yeah. thing for me. So it's a Christmas gift. Yeah, well, it'll get passed on. Yeah, they'll never know. <laughs> This is the mold so you can see the pattern. It was sprayed with the zip. Yep. How often do you have to spray that normally? If I'm doing my stuff, I'll push it to the limit. Mm -hmm. You know, that... Uh, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. But see how you lost that in the pattern in the glass? Mm -hmm. I just think this is so cool. Mm -hmm. yep. So now I have to do another one. Bummer. Oh, darn. Sorry. <laughs> um... I usually do six, seven firings with it when I'm slumping, you know, because it's done at a lower temperature. Right. You know, um, so it doesn't burn it away. Um, when I'm doing student projects, I go, yeah, okay, maybe I'll put a new coat on it just to make sure so that nothing breaks. Yeah. Okay. And you don't know what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, that stuff's expensive. You don't want to just overdo you it. You can tell it's zippy. It's all over oh, the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, it's expensive. Initially, but the amount of firings that you get out of it and what it does. I mean, if you looked at the bottom of it, right. it's nice, clean. Now, the zip spray, is that like a silicone? Or Quite boring nitride. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's what I was wondering too, because if you touch that, is that taking off the protective so you got to hit it again? No. Think about it like greasing and flouring a pan to make a cake. It, it releases. Thank you. Yeah, everything here is food related. Yeah. <laughs> you want stringers, it's spaghetti. You want noodles, it's fettuccine. Did you, know? <laughs> you bring treats? Did you supposed to bring treats? The kids came again. <laughs> okay, so this is the mold that Deb used to make that. Okay, we used to use the primer, you know, where you mix it with the water and then you would brush it on and stuff like that. Um, and it worked for years and it was therapy for myself. I loved doing it. It kept me busy and I was happy, you know, but uh, it's more the thing on this one. You might not notice it as much, but when you get some of the molds that have a lot of the detail, you're brushing that on. It can fill in a lot of the holes, the pockets, and you lose a lot of the detail from it, you know, because it fills it in. You know, whereas with this, it's just an aerosol spray, you know, so. And you said you only, how many times do you? Okay, when it's a brand new mold, you're going to do two coats. Okay. Yeah. You know, after that, I do it once. Oh, I did good. It's got four coats. <laughs> and it came out clean, which is good. Well, because I didn't want it to stick in those creases. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that when I had done some of the floral formers and was using the stainless steel molds, it was the kind of thing that I sprayed according to directions, which is an oddity. But uh, I said, God, you can still see the metal. You know, that, that, that can't work. It's got to be more than that. So I sprayed more onto it. You know. So them, them cups, you can just spray that and not use the paper on top of that also? I, I still put, you know, like... Uh, paper on top. Well, it depends. Again, I have the old-fashioned ones. Mary gets in the new stuff for you guys. <laughs> We're so special. Yeah, I know. It's disgusting. <laughs> okay, pass it around. Look at the little lip at the top of it. 
Yeah, nice. mine don't have that. I know. You've got a nice smooth one. It, nice. It's like a martini shaker. Yeah. Well, you know, but, uh, yeah, and it's got the coating on it, so be careful. Don't yeah. lick your fingers. You know, it's poison. <laughs> you know, but uh, I usually cut, like, an eighth-inch blanket the size of the circle, and I put that on top. Just on top, not yeah. drooping over. Yeah, not, not drooping over. Okay. You know, nice. and that's only because there's that little pocket in there. Right. And it can trap air inside of it so that every once in a while I would get one cracked right at that point. On that cast iron one yeah. that I just got to do the hearts, that took four coats to get all the little pores. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because each time I let it dry, I'd see where a little pore had opened up. And yep. Yep, it's very porous and it has to fill all of that in. Mm -hmm. You know, but you'll never use primer on it then because it's got all those pores filled in so that it's just going to roll around and puddle and be liquid. You know, but uh, especially with the stainless steel ones, you know, that's where the zip is nice, you know, that or the white boron nitride, I should say, you know, because there's other ones. But, uh, you know, doing those before, you had to put your floral former inside the kiln, bring it up to 500 degrees, wear the gloves, take it out, coat it, eva you know, it would evaporate, put it back in, heat it up, and you were doing that. It was a pain to do that. We've been seeing that you can use terracotta pots too, also. Yeah, that's why they call it a pot melt, because it came from terracotta pot. They don't last forever, but they're inexpensive. They're cheap, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when it breaks, you throw it away and you get another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tie up with a greenhouse person. But, okay, so what you would do, Deb cut two pieces of glass, a clear, and then the text, or the blue white one so that then she put it into the kiln did a full fuse with it okay full fuse and the, pro, you know, the kiln that she has it's uh, all programmed already so that you hit three buttons there's a tack a contour a slump and a full okay and it go on the new one with the new yeah screen you have to look up your co and it's on the same line what you're going to do full fuse and then you have to tell it medium, fast, slow, very slow. Yeah. This one's a scroll up and down yeah. menu. You're right, the elevator. It has it all in one okay. line. Okay. Yeah, they've, all three they've items are one them. line. No, they've improved them from before because it used to be the coefficient. Then you had to pick the procedure. Then you had to pick the speed mm -hmm. that you were going to do it at. Yeah. Okay. So when you do a full fuse, which is what Deb did first, it's taking the two separate pieces of glass, heating it up to approximately 1450 degrees, holding it for 20 minutes, um, and they have that all set already, that they sent out surveys throughout the country, everybody put down what their program was, and then they took the average of it and they put that in there, okay, so that you can get good results with it. So it's almost to the point where uh, you don't have to know anything. You just want to know if you want it to be flat, whether you want to have some texture, or you know what you're going to do with it. And it doesn't make any difference if you were to do slow, medium, fast, extra slow, whatever. If it's the fusing temperature, it's still going to go to the same temp. And it's still going to give you the same results every time. We did, uh, she did a small, going to be a small plate bowl. Okay. And I did something else. Hers came out dog boned. Mine didn't. Same, same schedule. What colors? She had red and black. Red, black, and white. Red, black, and white, and they were layered. Okay. And I don't know what I did, but some different. Okay. So yeah. it, didn't, it didn't dog bone like hers. Okay. A single layer, double layer. Well, yours, yours, well, a single, yours. yours a single, yours a single, mine were double. Yeah. And that's why you didn't get the dog boning. Because a double layer is going to, okay, that's inch and a half, two layers. It was right next to the single one. If you put that one on top of it, you're going to see the difference in the size. And that's three of clear that started out one and a half inches. Okay, okay so now you have that volume aspect of it. You've got three layers of glass, three eighths of an inch thick too thick. It wants to be about 3 sixteenths, quarter inch, somewhere's in there. Then it's happy. Okay. So that it's going to push out if you've got too much. If it's got too little, it's going to pull in. That's why you get the dog boning. So if you had a single layer, 
then you're going to get that try at the edge is trying to get to be that three sixteenths thickness right. of it. Whereas that's why when the double layer is there, it stayed the size that it's supposed to be. Yeah. All it did was you know melt the edges together, round them, give them that bullnose effect, and it kept the size and the shape that it's supposed to be used. Because your darker colors are yeah. going to absorb the light faster. Yeah, and that fritz almost like another layer of glass then for you as well to help yeah. keep the shape of it. Okay, so whenever you want to do something of a bowl, a dish, you know, plate, anything like that, you have you know two steps involved with it. You know that you have to do your full fuse first. You know, and then let that cool down to room temperature. Take it out, put it on the mold, heat it up again, and it goes to a lower temperature so that it'll take on that shape of the, you know, the mold that you're using. Okay. And depending on the type of mold, that's why I said bring that in, let me take a look at it, because it looked good in the picture. You know, quite often you get deeper than that, and you have to adjust your program, um, because it's going to take longer, you know, for it to drop to the bottom and bottom out. You know, that it could be like an inch deeper, and you would do that, you know, with the preset at the medium speed, and the bottom maybe just starts to touch so that you would have to fire it again. Uh -huh. Okay, so depending on the size, the diameter of the base itself, you know that when it's skinnier, um, it takes more to get it to go in and drop along the edges of it and bottom out so that you have a nice flat bottom on it so that it mm -hmm. sets flush on the table. Otherwise you have to do cold work, you know. Cold work is just grinding, you know. It just makes it sound good. You know, it's just a lot of labor, you know, to get that to do that for you, you know. And then after you do any cold work on it, it would be something where you could put it back in and fire polish it without losing the shape, you know, so that you could put shine back on the glass, you know. So. And we found that too, that if you do grind it, they ground some of this just to get my shape. Yeah. Make sure you wipe off that grinder dust. Yeah. Because that'll go back on. It'll it. cook into it. And sometimes you'll notice that when you grind your glass, I mean, you have a piece of glass straight, 90 degrees, and you grind it, and it's got that scuffed edge, rough mm -hmm. edge all along the edges of it. When glass melts, it pushes down and it pushes out. So it's pushing out that ground edge so that you can get, you know, that discoloration with it as well. You know, um, okay. So your slumping temperature is a lower temperature. And the depth of the mold, it's going to make a difference. The slant of the mold, it's going to make a difference. Um, yes, you can get books and they have pattern ideas in there. They have instructions in there. They have firing programs in there. All of it is just guidelines. Okay. Um, I mean, we had one person that they tried the program that it had said, and it was something. Oh, I'm getting sleepy. Oh, you know, um, that uh, it fired way too much. I said, yeah, it went up to like 1495 for 30 minutes. Well, that's what it said. It's, it's a suggestion because of the kiln that they were using. Plus it was from Europe, you know? So, I mean, it's gonna be something different, you know? But, uh, you know, you use those as a guideline. That's why you need to figure out what your kiln will do um, at the fusing temperature, the time, all of that stuff. So that when they're giving you what their firing schedule was and they go 1495 for the full fuse, you go, okay, they use 1495, I can go to 1450 because that's what my full fuse is. You know? So that's why you need to learn what your kiln is going to do. You've already got a fuse disc, two layers of glass, so it's gonna be quarter inch thick in the deepest part of it and if you have design work on top of it it's going to be thicker yet you know so that's why you want to bring that up at a slower rate you know 300 degrees an hour that's good um, I remember reading years ago it was saying that you don't want to go more than like 9 10 degrees a minute you know so that's okay 10 degrees a minute that's 600 degrees an hour that's pretty fast yeah. you I, know. Think, I think I slumped hard at uh the minimum, medium, or the yeah, on that. yeah, usually medium. Like the way it come out. Yep, you say the medium speed. That's what you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know the medium speed. It's a good catch-all. You know, um, yeah. again, it might be air on the side of caution. 
you know, but it's not it's saving you that much more time, no. you know. So, I mean, I like the medium. Thank you.